All right, we are at our local skate park, which I thought is a perfect opportunity for us to try some slow motion video and show you how to do slow motion video. Let's go. Right now we're at 120 frames a second, 1080p, and the shutter speed is 250th of a second. It should be two times the amount of your frame rate. All right, we've been doing some skating, getting some slow motion. How do you feel? Sweaty. And I feel great. Oh, good. Oh, you don't sound great. No, I'm great. Like, I'm glad I tried skating on the skating. Oh, yeah. I never tried it. Okay, you're right. You never tried it. Let's go back, put this into the edit, and make it slow motion. Are right, you seeing the results of the slow motion that I shot, but I've opened up Premiere. I have that project in progress, and I'm going to show you how I slowed it down, got that super slow motion, inside of Adobe Premiere, and then I'm gonna open up Final Cut Pro 10, and I'm gonna show you two ways that you can also do it in Final Cut, as well as the two ways that you can get it done in Premiere. Okay, your first option in Adobe Premiere is to navigate to the footage that you've shot. I've got all mine here. Regardless of whether you've shot 60 frames a second, 120 frames a second, whatever that is, as long as it's higher than your timeline, your sequence frame rate, you simply right click on your footage, go to Modify, and interpret footage. And you'll see here 119.8, which is 120 frames a second, which is what I was shooting at on my Sony a6500. And you simply go to assume this frame rate. We wanna tell it it's something different and we'll match the sequence frame rate of 24 frames a second, which is actually 23.98 to be extremely accurate. And we'll hit okay. Now this footage you'll see here is in slow motion. Now the entire clip is now at 23.98 frames a second. I'll just refer to it as 24. So 24 frames a second, slow motion. And because doing it this way affects the entire clip, I like to duplicate the clip as you see here. I made a copy. So simply right click, hit duplicate before you do the interpret footage. So I'll go back to the way it was and you'll see the footage is at its normal frame rate, 120 frames a second. All right, regular speed, not slow motion. And I duplicate this clip so that I can work with this regular 120 frames a second full speed clip if I wanna put it in the timeline as regular speed somewhere else. Now, when you put it into a 24 frames a second timeline, and when you play it back, it's playing 120 frames per second on a 24p timeline, but it's doing that perfectly fine. Adobe is making the adjustments, but it'll work full speed. Most people won't be able to tell that anything is happening differently. So that's a very cool feature of both Premiere and Final Cut. It can adjust to what you put in the timeline. What's also very interesting when you make this change to slow motion, the original clip that you shot is actually not affected. So I'm assuming it's just doing the change here with metadata. But if I went to this clip in my folder with all the clips and I played it, it's not at slow motion, it's at regular speed. So that's pretty cool because I think it used to actually affect the original raw clip. The other method in Premiere is to take a piece of your clip or the whole clip. You have it here in the timeline and right now it's full speed and you can right click on the clip, go to speed duration and here you can change the speed to whatever you want. So 120 frames a second in a 24 frames a second Timeline will actually allow us to slow this all the way down to 20% of what it was shot. I can click OK. You can see the clip got much bigger because now it's in slow motion. And again, nice and smooth. 
However, when you do this method, in order to know what percentage to set it at, interpret footage does that for you. It sets the speed. But in this case, if you don't know how much you can slow it down, then you have to do a little bit of math. And that math is simply taking your timeline frames per second, which in this case is 24, divided by the frame rate that you shot the clip at, so in this case, 120 frames a second, and then multiplying that by 100, which equals your maximum percentage. And in our case, we get 20%. Of course, I can slow this down to any percent above 20 that I want. So if I just wanted to go at 60%, because I like the way that 60% looks, then we can do that. And what's nice about this method is that it doesn't change your native clip. So I can use a different portion of this clip and bring it into the timeline. And the section here that I slowed down using speed duration is at that nice 20% speed. And then you'll see the next clip is still at the regular speed. So instead of duplicating the clip, you can work with it at both speeds by using the speed duration method. But again, you have to do some of the math. Now, my big question when doing it both of these ways is, is there a difference technically? And I dug deep into forums and I asked some experts, and it seems that from a software perspective, using interpret footage or the speed duration option, as long as everything is equal, meaning that the clip is a high frame rate, your timeline is a lower frame rate, and you do the proper math, then the clips, whether you use interpret footage or speed duration, will actually be the same meaning that you won't have better quality doing it one way or the other. And I shot this piece where I do side by side using interpret footage and speed adjustment, and they both look exactly the same. Really nice, slow motion. So you just wanna choose the method that works best for your workflow. If you didn't do the math and you slowed things down too far, so in our case we went 10% because we had no idea and we just wanted it to be that slow, you would actually get jittery results because those frames, they're not there. So you're really cheating yourself out of the smoothest slow motion that you can achieve. But of course, if this is the desired speed, then you can go ahead and you can use different options for this time interpolation, frame sampling, frame blending, and optical flow is actually just going to sort of make up some frames, make up the frames that aren't there, and it'll help increase the look of this slow motion. But again, this is not the best way to do it. You wanna shoot a higher frame rate and then slow things down as slow as possible using the maximum amount of frames that you shot. And you get really nice slow motion using that method. Now really quick, Inside Final Cut Pro 10 basically works the same, it just looks a little different. Again, you have two options inside Final Cut. However, in both cases, you have to have a clip in the timeline before you can make any speed adjustments. And if this is the first clip you've inserted into your timeline and the timeline doesn't recognize the clip, in our case, it's 120 frames a second, it's going to ask if I want to set my timeline based on the clip, and I'm going to tell it that I want it to be 2398 again because of our 24 frames. And again, we're playing 120 frames a second in this 24 frames a second timeline. But Final Cut is doing some magic math for us and playing it back at regular speed. But we're turning this into slow motion. Our first option is to select the clip and to come up and find this little retiming options pull down. We can come down to automatic speed. This is like interpret footage in Premiere and it's going to do the math for you. So you can see it slowed it down to 20% because it knows that we have 120 frames on a 24 frame timeline. It's done the math and now we've got super slow motion done for us. And like we did in Premiere in Final Cut, if you wanted to slow down to your own custom speed, you have some standard options that Final Cut gives you. These are preset 50, 25, and 10. And you can use these if you know the math. We could use 25, but we wouldn't be getting our maximum amount of frames because we know we need to do it at 20%. These are not basing anything off our clip. They're just preset percentages. Or go down here to custom, and now you have the option to enter your own speed rate, and we would do 20%. And now we have a custom speed of 20%, and again, super slow motion. This is the same case where if you were setting your percentage and you didn't know what percentage to use, you'd use the same equation, frame rate of your sequence divided by the frame rate of your clip times 100 gives you your percentage, max percentage that you can slow it down. Of course, there are other ways to get smoother slow motion with third-party plugins, 
different tricks. We showed you the optical flow, but this is working with the native frame rate that you shot at, a high frame rate, and converting it within the software for the best, smoothest native slow motion. All right, that's slow motion in Premiere and Final Cut. Hope you learned something. If you have any more questions, ask them in the comments. I learned a few things even doing the research for doing this tutorial myself. So always learning, you're always learning. Ask questions, we'll learn together. See you next time.